you can do it again if you would like to. Okay, perfect. So we're going to start off with what we have been doing normally. Get everything feeling nice and mobile and nice and comfortable. So to begin with, we're just going to take the hips wherever they feel comfortable and we're just going to move them from side to side. Just moving the hips from right to left. Perfect. So this is going to uh, just stretch out the inner thighs and the sides of the hips. And if you put your hands on your waist, you might find that you can feel that those muscles start to work as well. So just moving the hips from side to side. And what you'll also feel is as we do this one, you'll feel that your feet will start to move a little bit as well. So you'll feel a changing in pressure as to where the weight in the foot is. But we'll just do a couple more. Perfect, lovely. And then what we're going to do is we're going to circle the hips around. So they go a little bit forward and a little bit back and from the front we'll go a little bit side to side so just comfortable circles so it doesn't have to be a big circle so when you watch kids do it they'll do this sort of huge circle it doesn't need to be a huge circle at all so just that nice sort of circle just moving around so that all of those bones are just experiencing different movement Perfect. and this might feel a little bit clunky it might not feel smooth and that's fine as well. So it's not about the movement being smooth or being perfect. It's just about getting those movements going. And then we'll change direction. I'll go back the opposite way. Perfect. It's going back the opposite way. Lovely. So this side for me doesn't feel as smooth. And that's absolutely fine. Lovely, couple more. Perfect, lovely. And then what we're going to do is move our hips forwards and backwards in space. So we're going to use our arms to drive that movement. So we're going to reach the hands down the body and then reach the arms up. And the hips will naturally push forwards. And as you reach down, they'll naturally push back. And our body folds over. So we have flexion here. And then we have extension as we reach the arms up. And we're going to do about six of those, but we're going to add the breathing in. So we're going to inhale as you come down. Exhale as you come up. Inhale down. And exhale up. Lovely. We'll do four more. Inhaling down. Exhaling up. Inhale down, exhale up, inhale on the way down, exhale on the way up, and one more for good luck. Exhale down, and inhale up. Perfect, very nice. So it's just taking the hips in all three directions, and now we're going to do the same for our feet. So this time we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to rock forwards and backwards on the heels to the toes. So the toes might lift a little bit, but we're just going to rock them forwards and backwards. So heels and toes. So we normally do this folded forwards, but we're going to do it standing today. Just to kind of stimulate the balance there in the feet. So we're just kind of waking them up. It's probably a good smell. Lovely. We'll do two more. Heels and toes. Heels and toes. Perfect. And now we're going to go side to side. So we did this with the hips. But now what we're going to do is we're just going to rock the weight side to side on the feet. So I'll come a little bit further forwards. So we can either go, everything goes over to the right, everything goes over to the left. So we can do it that way. And if that feels comfortable, great. If that doesn't feel comfortable, you can do everything opens up inside, everything opens up outside. So either way, and you can try both and just see which one feels best for you. So just either this side to side motion 
So this one in particular feels really nice on my feet. They're cracking a little bit, but they feel like they're waking up, but there's no pain. So if there's pain, um, let me know. Unmute yourselves. Let me know and we can change it or we can do lift the outside edges of the feet, lift the inside edges of the feet. So either way or both, if this breaks, we'll just do a couple more. Lovely, perfect. And now what we're going to do is where we just did our hip circles, we're now going to do circles around our feet. So now, you know if you have like a little pendulum and it swings around, that's what our body's going to do around our feet. So we're just going to let our body circle around the feet. And what that's going to do is it's going to just cause you to have to balance a little bit differently. So everything moves around the feet. So our body weight moves forward, sideways, to the back, and to the other side. So from the front, it will look like We'll just do a couple more in this direction. And what you should feel is that your feet have to grip onto the floor. So your feet are having to grip as you do this. So all of these different movements, all of our single leg balances, all of these things, what it's doing is it's, it's forcing the bones to be moved in a certain way, our tissues to have to respond. And we'll go the other way. <coughs> Perfect. So when, when our tissue has to respond, so this is like muscles, ligaments, tendons, what it means is that they get stronger and they get used to certain positions. So if we were to imagine a bicep, if we were to continue to do movements where our upper arm came in and out away from, um, our lower arm moved in and out from our upper arm, the muscle would have to get stronger. It would have to um, respond. And it's the same with all of the tissues in the body. Our feet have to adapt to the movement that we're giving them. Perfect, lovely. And then we're just going to do the ones where we curl our toes up. So we're just going to imagine that you're curling up. So I'll show you this way. Perfect. So we're going to have our one foot in front and we're going to curl the toes. And what you'll find is that the foot in front is going to feel easier. And the reason for that is because you've got more space at the front of the ankle. So I don't know if you guys can see, but my foot that's in front is a little bit more than 90 degrees. The space between my shin and my toes is a bit more than 90 degrees. Whereas my leg that's behind is a little bit closer to 90 degrees. So this angle makes a difference to the feet. And then we're going to keep the feet where they are. But the other foot we're going to curl up. So the one that's behind you, or the, the foot that's behind, that's the one that's going to be a little bit tougher. And the reason for that is because the angle, angle is more intense. So do a couple more. And I don't know if you guys can see, but the one that's behind for me is really not moving that much at all, and that's fine. Perfect. And then we'll switch over. And the one that's now in front, we're going to do that one first. So this should be the one that you just did. But what you should find now is that that feels so much easier. You should find that all of a sudden you feel like you've got a lot more movement available left. Perfect. Is that feeling okay for everyone? Perfect. Cool. Lovely. And then we'll do the back foot. So the one that's going to feel restricted, we're going to do that one. And it's interesting to notice if that one feels easier because we had already done it in the front earlier. And I say earlier, like a minute ago. Okay. Perfect. We do a couple more. Perfect. Lovely. Now relax. Sorry. You too. And now we're going to just come into a little bit of single-legged balance. So what we're going to do is we've got two options. Option one, <coughs> we can do the ones that we've been doing for the last few weeks, which is just the forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. We're going to do five of those in each direction. If you'd like to start making them more challenging, 
what you can do is reach forwards, reach the knee up, reach back and reach the knee up. So the lifting of the knee in between each one will make it harder. We're going to do five on each side. I'm not getting very balanced there. I'm going to keep to the easy one. So we're going to reach the foot forward. You then have the option to lift the knee if you like, and then reach the foot back. Lift the knee if you like, reach the foot forwards and back. Lift the knee if you would like to, reach the foot back and back to center again. Knee lift if you like. So we can do two more in each direction. And one more in each direction. Perfect, lovely. And then we'll do the same on the other leg. So again, feel free to lift the knee if you like. And again, we'll do five in each direction. So we're going to go forwards, lift the knee, backwards. The knee, and then we'll just do five of these in each direction. I always just put my hands somewhere that's going to give me a little bit more balance. So Very nice guys, we're going to move sideways, so again, we have the option to go sideways, lift the knee, and then cross, lift the knee, so that will make it harder and more challenging, or you can just stick to the ones that we've done before. So it's very much a case of listening to your body. Some days we feel very energetic and other days not so much, and again, we're just going to do five of these in each direction. Lovely. And we do the same on the other side. So out to the side, you have the option to lift the knee if you like, and then across. Or just side to side. Very nice, awesome. And then we're coming into a trickier one that should be hopefully starting to feel a bit easier now. I'm going to hold on to the mantelpiece. I'm going to turn my hips as I reach my right foot back and then turn my hips as I circle my right foot forward. <laughs> so this is what we call a transverse plane. So if my right hand is my foot, it should go through this kind of motion around my left foot. So we're going to do five of these in each direction. We're going to reach the toes back and behind you. So that the toes are pointed back and behind just at four or five o'clock. If this was 12 o'clock on a clock face. And then we circle it around. And then we turn the foot in as we circle around here. And then bend the knee as we reach around. Straighten the leg as we bring it up. So again, this is just really taking the foot through all of these different positions. Beautiful. Last one. Perfect. Very nice. I'm going to do exactly the same on the opposite side. Then our left foot is going to circle around. This time it's going to go more to eight o'clock or seven o'clock on the clock face. And then around towards three o'clock. Around and back to seven. And around three. Beautiful. We'll do two more. And one more. Very nice. Awesome job. And now I think you should be feeling quite nice and warmed up. What we're going to do here is just two other little options. So we can do the one where you just gently press the tops of the toes into the feet and have a little wiggle. Um, or if that feels quite uncomfortable, 
just a little press and a little press and um, what i will say is oh, i'll just shut the door what i will say is it took me a couple of years to get to the point where i could point my big toe and say i'll just demonstrate to you so what used to happen is if i try to do that my big toe would do that and it's taken years to just get the movement where that big toe can point so if that feels horrendous don't worry it really like it's not something that we need to be able to do it's something that just by continued movement will start to become easier so we're just having a little wiggle and again if it feels easier you can just take the foot behind you have a wiggle behind it's just finding that kind of that version of the movement that feels good for you it's quite interesting i'll just very quickly demonstrate for you a lot of people, if they come into that position, their foot might cramp. Or if they come into that position, their foot might cramp. So it just gives us an indication that um, there's work to be done in the feet. So we'd like to be able to get to the point where they can do both positions comfortably. Okay, cool. So we've done those ones. <coughs> and then we're just going to do the one where you lift the heel off the floor. And we're just going to circle ball of the foot around so the ball of the foot stays on the floor and we're just going to circle lovely good and again just making sure it's where it feels comfortable it might feel comfortable a little bit wider it might give you more stability so just wherever you feel good circling around and then we'll change direction and go back the opposite way very nice Now we change legs exactly the same. I'm going to push the ball of the foot into the floor, circle around. And then circle around the opposite way. Lovely. Very nice. Awesome. Cool. So that's all of our feet done for today. And we've warmed up our hips a little bit. So we warm up a little bit more by doing some squats and we're just going to do five of each today. So we're going to take the feet wherever they feel comfortable and we're just going to do our five squats up and down. Feel free to add your breath in with them. So we can inhale down and exhale up. So if anyone has any neck issues, you can just tuck the chin and that will just keep everything in alignment. We inhale down, exhale up, inhale down. Exhale up, inhale down, exhale up, and then one more for good luck. Inhale down, and exhale up, lovely. Now we're going to bring the feet closer together so they can either touch or they can just come a little bit closer wherever you feel comfortable. And again, we do five of these, so we're going to inhale as we come down, exhale as we come up, inhale down, exhale up, and three more. Two more. And one more. Perfect. Very nice. Next ones we're going to do, we're going to take them wide, but we're going to have our feet parallel to each other. So they're not turned out, the feet are parallel, and we're going to push the knees wide as we come down. So we're going to inhale, push the knees out. Exhale, come up. Inhale, push the knees out. Lovely. Two more. Pushing the knees out as you come down. And you should feel a bit of a stretch in the inner thighs as you do this. More and more. And two. Now we turn the feet out. This gives us external rotation. So it will give us a different sensation. And again, we do five of these. Inhaling down. Exhaling up. Inhale down. Exhale up. Inhale down. Inhale down, exhale up, and one more. Inhale down, exhale up. Awesome job. And now we're going to turn our toes in towards each other. So if my hands and my feet, they just turn in big toes towards each other, we do exactly the same. We're going to inhale down, exhale up, 
Inhale down. Exhale up. Inhale down. Exhale up. Two more. Lovely. And then we're going to take a one foot a fraction in front of the other. So my big toe of my left foot is in alignment with the middle of my right foot. So it's just a little half position. And we're going to inhale down. Exhale up. Lovely. Inhale down. Exhale up. Three more. Inhale down. Exhale up, inhale down, exhale up, and one more, inhale down, and exhale up. Awesome. Switch it over. Other foot in front, exactly the same five as these, so inhaling down, exhaling up, and four more. Three more. Three more. And one more. Good. Very nice. Awesome. Those are really good. So now what we're going to do is we have two options. We're going to open up for our backs with the option of squatting. So if it feels okay, you're going to squat and we're going to drive your right elbow back behind you as you squat. Doing five of those. If that doesn't feel good for you today, you can come into a seated position and just bring the right elbow back, whichever one you prefer. But we'll do five of those. So five. And bring the elbow back opposed to the arm. Makes it more of a movement for your thoracic. So this is that kind of upper back area, as opposed to just intense on the shoulders. Perfect, very nice. And we'll do the same on the other side, five on the other side. Five, four, Three, two more, two, one more, one. Very nice, awesome job. Okay, now what we're going to do is, again, we've got the option. We can squat and reach back and behind, or we can sit and reach back and behind, whichever one suits you. Again, we'll do five of those. So we'll go five, four, Three, two, and one more. Perfect. And then the same on the other side. Five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Very nice. Awesome. So those are all of our squats done now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come into our upper back. So. <clears throat> What we're going to do, have a couple of options. I'm going to demonstrate them. So you can come onto all fours. I'm going to do your cat cow. So I'll demonstrate what we're going to do first so you can decide what one suits you best. So you can either do your cat cow on the floor, and then we're going to come down to the forearms, which will make it more of an upper back exercise, and do them here as well. So we need both. The other option is if you've got something um, a bit higher, you can do it on there if it feels a bit intense. So I have got a big cafe thing here, which I'm going to bring into view. So my other option is if I don't want to do it on the floor, I can go elbows on here. And that's still going to get more movement through my upper back. And I can also do it here which will get more lower back. So whichever you prefer, big buffet or on the floor. So this isn't about right or wrong, it's just what feels comfortable for you. So when we're ready, we're going to do 10 of these. So we're just going to really relax and really start to connect with the breath really. So what we're going to do is we're going to inhale as we round for five, and then on the next five, we're going to inhale as we arch. I'll talk to you for a little bit. Okay? So hopefully everyone's in position. You're going to take a nice long inhale and round through your upper back. So we're going to inhale, we're going to be on our hands for this one. Inhale round. And then exhale as you drop your abdomen to the floor, arching under through the back. 
inhale round through the front and back page roll the chest for you inhale round back page roll the chest forwards inhale round back page you draw the chest forwards and then release Inhale round, and exhale as you draw the chest forwards. Perfect. We're going to take a nice big inhale here, and then we're going to exhale this time as we round. <sighs> inhale as you drop, and exhale as you round. Inhale as you draw, the chest. Exit as you round. Inhale, drop. And exhale, round. Lovely. Perfect. Feel free to grab some water if you need any. And then we're going to do the same on the forearms. So you can do this on um, for your arms up on like a bed or a sofa. Um, to say, or you can come down and do it on all fours, whatever feels most comfortable for you. So we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to inhale as we round, exhale as we drop. So we're going to do five of those. So when we go to level, we're going to inhale round, exhale drop, inhale round, exhale drop, inhale round. Exhale, drop. Inhale, round. Exhale, drop. One more for good luck. Inhale, round. And exhale, drop. Perfect. Now what we're going to do to exhale is we push our upper backs up to the sky. So we'll take a long inhale to press up. And we're going to exhale as we round our upper backs up to the sky. Inhale down. Exhale down. Inhale down. Exhale up. Inhale down. Exhale up. And inhale down. And again, because I'm not so good at counting, we'll do one more. Very nice. Awesome. Feel free to give yourself a little bit of a rest from that position. It can feel quite intense. And I'm going to demonstrate the next one. This time what we're going to do is we're just going to shift our bodies forwards and backwards in that position. So again, you can do it on the floor or with your arms elevated on something else. And what we're going to do from here is we're going to rock the body forwards and backwards as far as this feels comfortable. So what this is going to do is get a little bit more into the upper back. And just take it for a range of movement that feels comfortable for you. So whenever you're ready, we're going to come down onto the forearms as opposed to the hands. And we're just going to rock forwards and backwards, just letting the chin ever so slightly tuck. And this will just help your neck to feel really comfortable in this position. Lovely. We'll do two more of these. Perfect. Very nice. Awesome. From the back, we can come back up again. Readjust clothing if needed. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do that same movement but on the hands. So here, you can go toes pointed or toes flexed, whichever feels most comfortable for you. And what we're going to do is we're just going to rock forwards and backwards here. So again, this is going to move through your spine, but more through your hips than your spine for this one. If you look at my lower back, and you can see my lower back's arch, it's only when I hit that very end bit of the movement, it will start to round. And even if you can't get um, you know, if that's your maximum range, what you can do is just push back a little bit more and that will cause your lower back to round. 
And then as you come forward, you let it arch the other way. So you're pushing back and then rounding. So you're kind of like a cat. It's like you're pushing the floor away and you should get that rounding through the spine. And as you reach forward, it should naturally arch. So you're just moving in and out. Lovely. And that should feel really quite nice and probably easier than the last one that we did. And what this is going to do is it's going to increase our range of movement at our hips. And it's also going to mobilize through the knees as well. Maybe two more. And one more. Perfect. Lovely. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a harder option that we can build up to. And there's a few different ways of doing it. This one is exactly the same movement, but with the knees hovering above the floor. This one's really hard. So what we'll all eventually be able to do at some point, and there's no rush here, is be able to have our hands on the floor, knees lifted, and move forwards and backwards. The goal for that is that we don't want to just push our bodies and do something really hard. We want to get to the point where we're strong enough and mobile enough to be able to do that. So what we can do with this one is we can do it with our bodies raised, so by using a buffet or the sofa or the arm of the sofa. So you guys should be able to see here, excuse the angle, but what I can do here is I can put the hands onto the arm of the chair. I can come into my little plank position. And I can bend my knees and push my bum back, and then I can push my hips forward. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. It's going to feel comfortable. The other way is against the mantelpiece. So you just come into a plank kind of position. You lift the heels up, and what you do is you sink your hips back. And then you come forwards so that the hips are pushing forwards. And then you push your bum and your hips back and then you come forwards. So this is all the same movement. You can even do it on the wall. So my mum's going to kill me. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take you guys over here so you can see the wall. And what we're going to do here is hands on the wall and you can just push your bum back and straighten. Push your bum back and straighten sideways on so you can just see it from different angles. My hands are up here, my body's relatively straight. I'm going to push my bum back and come forwards into this sort of straight position. And what this is going to do is it's going to open up through your upper backs, mobilize your hips, mobilize your knees, get you strong in your shoulders as well. And as we get stronger, we can just lower ourselves down. So from doing it on the wall to doing it lower, up here, I'll go here because it doesn't break. So you can then go onto a sofa or something as you get stronger. Okay, does that make sense to everyone? Perfect. So, what we're going to do this time is I'm just going to watch you guys and talk you through what we're up to. So, it's all about safety and it's all about you feeling good at the end of the session, not injured. So, Depending on how strong you're feeling in your shoulders, you can have a go at doing the one on the floor. You can have a go at doing it elevated up on a sofa or something, or on a bed, or on a bench, or on a desk, whatever feels good. And we're gonna come into a little sort of plank position. So the weight is in the hands and in the toes. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to push our bums back behind us and bend our knees. Yep, perfect, Jan. Yep, perfect, Mum. <coughs> cool, those are great, Mum. So the idea with this is you should feel a really nice stretch in the upper back. Lovely, cool, nice job. Excellent, cool. How are you getting on, Kieran? It looks like you've got a helper. Cool. Is it nice, Jan? Very nice. Awesome. Beautiful. 
and lovely. We'll just do two or three more. Lovely, very nice. Cool. What well a mum. Nice job, awesome, really good, cool. So now what might happen is, because our hands have been here, it might feel a little bit tight across here. So now we're gonna interlock the hands behind your back and push your chest forward. Lovely. And that's just gonna give us the, the opposite, kind of. Perfect, and then you can relax there. Okay, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna stay on all four, so we'll do this one together. So. It's another nice one to open up through the upper backs. On all fours, what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of pull our bums back a little bit. Um, alternatively, if this feels horrible, you can sit down with your forearms onto your knees. So I'll show you both. Forearms on your knees. What you do, or hands on the knees, you're going to reach one arm up and down, reach the other arm up and down. So that's our option seated. And what you should find is that your back starts to arch. So this is really nice for mobilizing the upper back, just in a different way. Alternatively, knees bent, hands on the floor. I'm gonna come up onto my fingertips because my upper back always feels tight. And I'm gonna inhale, reach the arm up. Inhale, reach the arm up. And in fact, that feels horrible for me today. So I'm gonna try hands on my knees. Inhale up. Inhale up. Lovely. We'll do five more of these on each side. One more, very nice. And one more. Beautiful, awesome job. And then from there, we are going to come down onto our bums and give us something different to do. So again, you can do your seated on the bed um, or on the floor, wherever you feel comfortable. And we're just gonna roll the knees from side to side. So we're just gonna roll these knees from right to left. So you can do it either with the arms behind you, you can lie down and do it. Or if these are starting to be easy, you can have your hands in front of you and let the knees roll from side to side. So when we talk about mobility, it's having strength and flexibility. It's having the strength to move the bones and the joints safely. And the strength, or like you're, you're using your strength for the flexibility, basically. Perfect. So just do a couple more of these on each side, whichever way feels good. And as I always say, some days it might feel amazing and you want to do the harder option. Other days we might feel wrecked and want the more gentle option. Perfect, very nice, awesome. What we're gonna do from there, we have a couple of options, is we're going to open up through our chest in more of a kind of yin yoga kind of way. So these are really nice. So we're gonna to get to lie down for the rest of the session. So you can either grab yourself a pillow and you can roll the pillow up like that and you're gonna place it underneath your back or you can grab a towel and roll that up, whichever you've got handy. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be close by. Perfect, cool. And then oh, you want a pillow that sort of, um, you don't mind folding in half. So you can either literally just fold that pillow in half 
And then what I'm going to do with this folded paper, you can move back over a little, is I'm going to place it underneath my upper back and spine. And what that's going to do is it's going to lift my chest away from the floor. And from here, I have two options in my head. Option one is if I'm feeling very, very mobile and my chest and my throat all feel comfortable, I can lie here with my head on the floor, but my back raised. Today, that doesn't feel nice for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the pillow back further. So it's more around my shoulder blades and my head. So my head is on the same level as the chest. Okay, I'm going to relax the arms out to the side. And we're just going to literally do nothing for a few minutes. So the idea of this is that we're in a really beautifully relaxed position and it's just going to open up through the chest. So we're starting to unwind now after all of those pretty movements that we did earlier. So our arms just relax out to the side, finding that really nice comfy spot. You're very welcome to straighten the knees out. Or what I like to do is have my feet wide and let my knees rest in towards each other and that feels really comfortable. And we're just going to relax and do absolutely nothing. I'm not going to talk, but I'll just tell you when we're ready to come out of it. So we'll just take a few long deep breaths here and just enjoy doing nothing. At any point you feel a little bit uncomfortable and you want to remove the pillow, go ahead. If this feels amazing, I guess we'll stay here for another minute.
thing. And then when you're ready to, you have a few options. You can either gently roll off the blade to the side, or you can just lift it up and come out of that position, whichever feels best for you. And just have a moment to just feel how your back feels now, if you like. And of course, we will remove the pillow, lie back flat again, and just see if you feel any more open through the chest. Then from there, we're going to take that same pillow again. We're going to fold it in half. And what we do this time is we're going to lift up your hips and pop the pillow underneath your hips. So underneath your bum or underneath your hips. So it's just going to lift your bottom off the floor ever so slightly. And again, we're just going to relax here for a minute or two. So arms relax wherever they feel good. Again, you can rest the knees towards each other, whatever feels really comfy. And then you have a minute or two to do absolutely nothing. And then whenever you're ready to, you can just gently lift up your hips again and just gently remove that pillow. And again, just observe how you feel now. Maybe take a breath or two. And then when you're ready to, you're coming into a final position which in yoga is called Shavasana. So we call it corpse pose. We're just gonna let the feet relax, let the arms relax out to the side, take up as much space as you like. And today, I'm gonna just leave you to relax in silence for a few minutes. And then I'll tell you when we get to the end. So just getting yourself really comfortable. You're welcome to use the pillow under your head. Relax the arms, relax the legs. And just have a minute or two to do absolutely nothing.
Loving and when you're ready to so just allow a bit of movement to come back into the toes and back into the fingers. Have a nice little stretch. And then when you're ready to you will gently roll onto the side. Taking a nice deep breath in. And exhale. When you're ready to we'll gently press your way up to seated. So bring the palms together in front of the heart. Bow the gaze. Let the lips curl up into a lovely big smile. Namaste. Cool, nice job guys. Cool, I'll just unmute you all and see how everyone's doing. So I think if you have muted yourself, I can't unmute you. How's everyone feeling? Me? Good stars. Um, yeah, I'm feeling a lot better now. Perfect, awesome. Thank you. Can all fours feel for everyone? Yeah, that was good, thank you. Yeah, it's felt, felt good today. Perfect, how's your low back feeling, Jen? Uh, yeah, it, 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 when I extend, I just feel it a little tense, um, but I just don't extend quite as much as I was before, just okay. to keep it comfortable. What I would do is I'd just keep on focusing on the, the opposite movement, the flexion, yes. and then yeah. back to sort of a, like a normal neutral position, and then back into that rounding because you'll still be extending going from that flexion to normal. Okay. Wonderful, thank you. Awesome, cool. Well done, if anyone's got any questions at all, let me know. Um, I'll hang on here for a minute or two. Um, if not, have a wonderful day and I'll hopefully see you guys on Wednesday. Lovely, thanks Amy, I'll message you later. Perfect, have fun, have a lovely day. Bye. Bye. Thank you Amy. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Bye John. Bye. Bye. So how are you feeling, Mum? Oh, good, thank you. Perfect. Everybody off the bed so that they could, so I could lay down. <laughs> awesome, cool. Um, I've just got to go and text my next client. Oh, I'll stop recording.